You're welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. And earlier we had a conversation on stroke. And so De La Serpe, um did a demonstration on how you can help uh, revive someone who goes a bit off. And so she's left her contacts, especially for those of you who want to get in touch with her in order to buy the machine as well. So 24 024-004-8179 or 054-60-78861. And also the Stroke Association uh, Support Network Ghana is working on a walk against stroke. It's happening on the 26th of October and so please be part. And also World Stroke Day event is happening on the 29th of October at UPSA. You can call them on 26 246 Three nine eight six for more information. Now let's talk about the constitution review, and uh, we have members from the commission joining us today, and they'll tell us uh, how far they've gone in terms of pushing the agenda of the constitutional review, and how far um, you know we've gone, whether we're making progress, and when it's actually going to be amended as well. And so in the studios, let me say good morning to Aram Bashan, and she's a convener election. Uh, COPL, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm blessed. All right. Can I say hallelujah? <laughs> <laughs> we have our joke. Not she understands. Too. And also in the studios, I have Alexander Bankole Williams. He's a chairperson of advocacy committee GFD. Thank you so much for joining us as well. And I hope you're well. Yes, certainly. Thank you. And All good right. morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. So the commission was set up in 2010. So um, maybe just yeah. uh, a if bit of give some contest mm -hmm. being that. We are a group or a community uh, made up of um, organizations uh, from uh, CSO, some are political parties, mm -hmm. and some are even state institutions. Yeah. So for instance, the NCCE is a member of or our community. Okay. Essentially, we've been working as a community of election uh, on the learnings, on, on the practices that we have over the period, interested in a, a transparent, credible, inclusive electoral management process. Okay. Within that is um, the overarching uh, um, drive for a more accountable um, governance in the country. And so in doing that, we picked upon the Constitution Review uh, uh, Commission and the reform work it had been doing, we realized that quite a number of the reform um, agenda that we sought mm -hmm. as, as a people, a number of them had been considered okay. within that process. And of course, not all of them that we desire collectively as a community had been adopted as a white paper mm. uh, recommendation. But be it as it may, it has been. Um, so the commission was set up by the uh, late President Atta Mills, yeah. as you know, mm -hmm. in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, they, were, they were mandated, uh, among other things. Let me just, again, All by right. way of contest. All right, and while she's looking for it, let me just say that this interview is supported by Star Ghana with thanks to Danida, UK Aid, and the European Union. So, Aram, you okay. have the information. So, the terms now. of reference for the Commission as of the time was to ascertain from the people of Ghana their views on the operation of the 1992 um, Fourth Republican Constitution, and in particular, the strengths and weaknesses of that of the constitution which is our working document yeah. currently because there had been so many sentiments about the fact that there were gaps in them some of the provisions mm -hmm. were not as democratic as they should be okay and of course bearing in mind that we were coming from a, a military background before we inherited that within the republic again it was also to articulate the concerns of the people of ghana on amendments that may require for instance a comprehensive review of the 1992 constitution if, if there were recommendations they were also to make recommendations for government's consideration mm. and provide a draft bill for possible amendments to the 1992 okay. constitution. So essentially, go around the country, talk to um, the people of Ghana, mm. talk to all stakeholders, pick their views and, and, and come up with what they are saying so far as the constitution, the current constitution, 1992, yeah. is concerned. Okay. They brought reports to the uh, mm. uh, to the president, and then it, it was accepted. That was in 2012, 20, 2011, 2012. Yeah. By 2014, a, a, a constitutional um, review implementation committee was set in place, and government also issued a white paper 
of, yes. obviously it adopted some of the recommendations mm -hmm. about 90 percent of the oh, recommendations were adopted okay and and so it then puts it in a white paper okay. what that means is that we are ready to go with this set of recommendations All right. those that it, it i disagreed with didn't find their way in and in some there. of them it was also about the modalities of the of the recommendations it disagreed All right. with All right. now we are stuck hmm. where do we go between 2014 and now, of course, the current government institutionalized a constitution day, which is January 7th, January, yeah. to, to commemorate the, the power and, and the supremacy of the oh, constitution, which is fantastic. Yes, it, it is. afforded us opportunity to reflect on the body of rules that we collectively as a people have agreed to, to govern ourselves mm -hmm. and also to look at its strengths and weaknesses. So that was fantastic. Okay, I like the fact that you talked about strength and weaknesses because uh, some might describe it as a strength, but a lot of people would describe the weakness as, first of all, placing too much power on the presidency. And that's been one of the major reasons why, we, you know, the team has wanted a constitutional review. Let me bring Alexander in to tell me more about why you think that, you know, uh, that needs to be changed. And I'm talking about the power that has been placed on the presidency. Okay. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Uh, basically, when you look at what the CRC as a constitutional review commission was, was uh, commissioned to do, yeah. to engage the people of Ghana as to their views on our constitution that we are using. Mm -hmm. And like Elion rightly pointed out, obviously one of the flaws of our, our constitution stems from the fact that uh, this is a constitution that was put together mm -hmm. under a military regime. Yeah. Uh, who ended up, uh, the, the regime also ended up being referee, a referee and a player at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the new era that we're, we're finding ourselves in, that is the Fourth Republic. Yeah. Now, we, we are of, of the view that that negatively influenced the, the body uh, of the, the, the writing of the Constitution, thereby placing a lot of power in the president. Now, you are, if you are looking at efficiency and effectiveness, mm -hmm of the state, then the, the document can only work in theory, mm -hmm. but constitution cannot work in practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when you take a basic subject like the number of people the president actually appoints, yeah. by way of appointment, the president is supposed to know these people, know their capabilities, and be able to speak to what they are being appointed to do. Yeah. But there are too many offices. The president actually appoints thousands and thousands <laughs> of persons oh, yeah. without actually critically knowing these, these people. Of course, uh, some of the checks and, and balances that in some cases he does it uh, on the advice of the, uh, of the, of the state council mm -hmm. and some, in some cases the Public Services Commission. Uh, that, be that as it may, the, Constitu the Constitutional Review Commission was yeah. the government of Ghana's indication that the people of Ghana should speak as to how the, the Constitution, what should happen to our Constitution. Okay. The people of Ghana have spoken. Mm. The, gov the Constitution of Ghana mandates that government issues a white paper mm -hmm. as to the portions of the report they accept on what they reject. What's the, yeah. So they have also done the constitutional mandate. Mm -hmm. The question is, why are we still where we are? <clears throat> why have the people of Ghana spoken regarding mm -hmm. what should happen to the 1992 Constitution? And we are still sitting where we are. Mm. After having spent... 6.3 million cities, oh, sorry, dollars, dollars yeah. uh, which at the time was in excess of about 50 million cities. Mm. You, you, you wonder, I mean, today it, it will be translated as in excess of 28 million cities. Mm -hmm. But at the time, uh, it, it was in excess of 15 million uh, cities. Yeah. You yeah. would ask yourself, why have we put in so much money and then today we sit here not actually having the things implemented. implemented. In 2013, 2014, the, the committee to oversee the implementation started with, of course, just to give it a, a better context, uh, the report of the CRC was presented on the 20, uh, yeah. 20th of December, 2011. Mm -hmm. Government came out with its white paper in June 2012 mm -hmm. and clearly indicated that in view of the fact that we were going into an election, which was true, yeah. we, had, we, were, we were five, six months away from, from a major election. So we would put and uh, we apply the brakes, and once we get through the elections, we would commence implementation. Mm. The committee was set up in 2013, and since then, we've not had 
anything mm -hmm. much regarding what the, the, the committee has uh, has been doing. We we heard that uh, a draft bill was in place yeah. that was supposed to go to parliament. We understand the dynamics that, uh, yes, it, it happened under a particular political regime. Yeah. And then we are in another, uh, we are in another in political new, regime. But speaking of the new political regime, our president, our current president, I mean, when he was in opposition, I believe that he added his voice to, um, you know, this. this sure. And that, he that's said the good he was news going... about this process yeah. that yeah. all the presidents, not even one, disagreed with the with. reform exercise. Okay. And so none can step out of sync with this whole process. And why has that been a delay? And indeed, even if you look at one key recommendation, which is about electing MMDCs, mm -hmm. you would say that that is ongoing. Exactly. Even though the white paper modality spelled out, it's, it's, it's a variation with how it's, it's going. So yeah. you don't even know whether it is the white paper that is informing the current exercise, which mm -hmm. is leading to a referendum mm -hmm. that uh, come December, or it is informed by the party in offices manifesto okay. because you know it's a manifesto yeah. pledge again there's a bit of affirmative action, action that is captured even in the recommendations awesome. that is supposed to come up with an act and that process is ongoing mm -hmm. you know um, we already have a draft and that is leading up to that but if you look at that you don't know whether it is being informed by the white paper because yeah. they, there are some clear provisions in there so whether that is captured in 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 and you're talking about affirmative bill action. I'm sure that the conversation is going to start again, especially because Parliament has, um, you know, resumed exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of other things as well connected to this. But okay, so let, there's going to be a stakeholders, uh, you know, meeting or forum that's happening in order to what? push the agenda even further. And, exactly. And I mean, like Alex mentioned, it's been how many years down the line uh, since mm -hmm. the Implementation Years Committee yeah. was set up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure by now those members are out of office. Once the new government came in, we don't know if a new team has been set up. We don't yeah. know who they are. We don't even know whatever work. And by the way, we have run checks as a community. So it's not like we, we just got up and started pushing mm -hmm. this. So we this dialogue, stake, national stakeholders, this um, forum is supposed to bring all the parties involved in this process, including those that had the mandate to even start the process, okay. to come brief us. We need to, I, I call it, defrosting the memory of Ghanaians because yeah. we all are at a loss. There are many, many aspects of even the white paper that many of us are clueless mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And so we need to reopen the conversation on the constitution reform process, okay. bearing in mind that for all the other governance issues that we have, whether it's about the sweeping powers mm -hmm. of the presidency, whether it's about affirmative action, yeah. whether it's about even um, uh, political parties, um, regulations, all there are quite a number of sweeping um, provisions that have been captured uh, in the white paper. So mm -hmm. bringing these stakeholders, one for government to tell us where we are, where we are going, yeah. requiring a roadmap mm. that spells out an implementation plan okay. and the people involved. And we want it to be inclusive. Every voice within this process matter. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason why we have, uh, for instance, like Alex, who is also a GFD, a member of this community, yeah. um, the, the youth caucus, political parties, because it has to be a non-partisan process. Okay. It must not be a, a, poli or a partisan promise captured in a manifesto you know, yeah. that should drive the agenda, but that within that public sphere, void of partisanship, and we're looking at this collective as a people mm -hmm. and what we desire to be the next level of our constitution. Hmm, looking forward to it. Alex, you were going to say something. Yeah, um, um, just to add on the fact that, uh, particularly when you listen to our president, our current president, who happens to be a legal luminary himself, yeah. who actually believes in the power of the people mm -hmm. and what that gives him, we are actually saying the people of Ghana have spoken exactly. so far as our 1992 constitution is concerned. Mm -hmm. Government is a continuum. It doesn't matter if, you know, it, it happened under a different political regime. The white paper of government is the white paper of the government of Ghana. Yeah. So can our president ensure that the people of Ghana's voice mm -hmm. is actually giving meaning? We are there. We so from yesterday we actually had a press conference mm -hmm. making a few demands of uh, key stakeholders so far as this conversation is concerned. Mm -hmm. And one of them is to know 
we currently know the state of affairs. Mm -hmm. What ha what's happened to the committee that is supposed to be in place overseeing the implementation of, of the proposals? Mm. What what is the, gov the the president's actual position on these matters, ensuring that the people of Ghana are given a better voice? Yeah. And then, uh, as Aram indicated, CSOs, the media, ensuring that this conversation is opened up again. We all participated in the process. Yeah. Let's make sure that our efforts do not, did not go in vain. What does Ghana stand to lose if, you know, these recommendations it's are lose not? the voice of the people. All right. The voice of the people that spoke, that gave recommend. Else, then what was the point of the commission going all mm -hmm. the nook and cranny of this nation, yeah. picking people's sentiments about the working documents? Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's just like a household. This is how we want to be governed. Yeah. We want this person to have a say so, that person shouldn't. This is the process they should. Mm -hmm. And so this is the will of the people. That is democracy. If we say we are a democratic nation and we are only improving, marching forward with this with, journey, yeah. then all the processes leading up to entrenching this culture, bettering this culture, needs to be embraced. Yeah. And I like the reference that our sitting president is a legal luminary. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. he, he is a constitutional lawyer par excellence. Exactly. And so this call is actually, in, it's, it's an executive mandate, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And so it is a call. And the um, dialogue, for instance, is bringing on everybody 30th uh, October. Okay. We will be at the Academy of Arts and Sciences. All of us, you are, it's strictly by invitation, okay. by the way. But if you're interested in the governance of, of this nation and, and all those processes, please, you can, you can come along and let's hear your opinion. Come let's along, let's hear your opinion on the constitutional review. And I'm sure that that is going to make uh, life a, a bit much easier and better um, for Ghanaians in general. And so I've been speaking to Aaron Bashan, convener election, COPL, and Alexander Bankole Williams, chairperson of advocacy committee of GFD. Thank you so much uh, for joining me on air this morning and I'm sure that we'll make progress with this. Thank you. Well, so this interview is supported by Star Ghana with thanks to Danida UK Aid and European Union.